this is number 10, so this is an example um, of lesson 8.6, which is over hypothesis testing using the p-value method um, when you're hypothesizing about a standard deviation or a variance. So here's the problem. So let me move the sheet. Um, and on your books, this is on page 446. The high temperatures for a random sample of seven days in July in southwest Pennsylvania are listed. 85 degrees, 86 degrees, 90, 93, 77, 81, 88. At alpha equals 0.10, is there sufficient evidence to conclude that the standard deviation for high temperatures is less than 10 degrees? So I'm going to think that that's the claim. They're, they're asking whether it's less than 10 degrees. So I think that's what they're claiming. So in my alternative, because I want to make sure my alternative has the less than in it, I'm going to say the standard deviation, which is lowercase sigma, is less than 10 degrees. I assume they're doing this in Fahrenheit. And that would be the claim. So then the alternative would be that the standard deviation is greater than or equal to 10 degrees. Because I'm hypothesizing about a standard deviation or a variance, I'm going to have to use the chi-squared distribution to analyze this. To get my test value, we're using the p-value method. The second step is to get your test value. Use this formula. Chi-squared equals n minus 1 times s squared over sigma squared. So I count up my n. My n is my sample size. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 7 minus 1 would be 6. If they, if they give me, this, this represents s squared as my sample variance. Or I can think of it as my sample standard deviation squared. Now, I don't know the standard deviation of these numbers. So what you'd have to do is take your calculator and um, push stat and then enter, and enter all these in a list. Once you get that done and you put that, you push stat, right arrow, enter, enter, and it'll give you your sample standard deviation, which in this came, case uh, comes out to S equals 5.407. So off my calculator, I get 5.407, and then I have to square it. My population standard deviation is hypothesized to be 10 degrees. So this is going to be 10 squared. Then you type that in your calculator. That's your test value. So I don't know if anybody's done that or knows what that would be. We could type it in quick. Anybody have it? I'll give you a minute and let you guys do it. Once you find that value, then you're going to find your p-value as step C. Anybody figure out what this comes out to? I got a small decimal. What'd you get? Um, 0.32. I got 1.1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. All right, I'm going to go with 1.75, and we can check it later, but that's not more reasonable. So. Yeah. Um, so, that's your test value. Uh, looking at this, this symbol points left, less than, it's going to be a left tail test. Okay? So, left tail test means my distribution, my chi squared curve looks like that, skewed right, but I'll be looking at the left tail. I have a chi squared test value, TV for test value, 1.75. The p value is that area. All right? There's, with, with what we have, we don't have any calculator programs that will calculate that for us on our calculators unless you download one from somewhere. We're not going to be able to get that exact value, but we can get an interval of about what that p-value is. This is the p-value area right here. So the way we get that is we go to our chi-squared chart, which I have up here on the screen. And so if my sample size was 7, my degrees of freedom would be 7, mi or 7 minus 1, which would be 6. And I'm going to come across here looking for my test value of 1.75. 1.75, I'm looking for it, looking for it. Oh, it's going to fall right in there. Okay. So my test value falls between these values. That means my um, p-value is going to be found by using these values. Now this is a little bit tricky. When it's a left-tail test, it's a little bit tricky. What this means, let me draw two more pictures here. This one, and let's do this one. So when the test value, if the test value would have been um, 1.635, this would have been point, what's that say, 0.95? Yep. So 
if, if it would have been that first critical value, this would have been 0.95, which would have made this 0.05. If my test value would have been 2.204, then I'd have 90% here, meaning that this would have been 90%, 0.90, meaning this would have been 0.10. So you always, when you're doing a left tail test, you always have to subtract these from one. In this case, it's one minus 0.95 is 0.05, one minus 0.9 is 0.10. So what I know that is that this actual p-value, since this test value is somewhere between this number and this number, I know the p-value is somewhere between 0.05 and 0.10. Let me get these actual numbers down to make sure this is a little clearer. So if, if, our, if our test value would have been 1.635, the p value would have been 0 0.05. If the test value would have been 2.204, then my p value would have been 0 0.10. But since the test value is actually between these two numbers, my p value is actually between those two areas. If it would have been a two-tailed test, I would have doubled these numbers. But it's not, so I'm going to leave it as is. Any questions about that? All right. Now, step D, you're going to compare your p-value to alpha. That's going to determine whether you reject or not reject. So as I look at number 10 again here, get my computer awake again. Okay, as I, as I look at my alpha, my alpha is 0.10. So if alpha... 0.10, and right here I see that my p-value is less than 0.10. So if alpha is 0.10 and my p-value is less than 0.10, that means I know that my p-value is less than alpha. That tells me I should reject the null. Then if I'm rejecting the null, that means I don't think the, I'm thinking the null is not true. I'm rejecting it. That means I'm thinking the claim is true. So we're not proving anything, but that's what I'm thinking. So I'm going to say there is enough evidence to support the claim. When the claims in the alternative use the word support. There is enough evidence to support the claim that the standard deviation is less than 10 degrees. There is enough evidence to support the claim that the population standard deviation I'm just going to say sigma is less than 10 degrees. Other thing you might get asked about is what does the p-value mean? What does the 0.05 and the 0.10 mean? What that means is that if the null really is true, if that really is true, there's somewhere between a 5% and a 10% chance that we would have gotten this test value or a more extreme test value. The chances, if this null is true, the chances of getting this, or one that's even lower, are somewhere between 5% and 10%. That's the, those are the probabilities. Let's get, shut that off. I think that might not work.